hello there, this is Xiao, and I'm here to take you on a tour of my home studio. So let's begin with this. This is a light. Light. But it's not just any old light. This light contains a LifeX smart light bulb. Um, I am a strong proponent of good lighting and having a light that changes color and brightness based off of circadian rhythm is a great way to get a good night's sleep. It also can do a lot more fun colors. Speaking of fun colors, if you look over there, you can see this big old LED strip around the back. And this shiny wonderment orb of whatever. It, I thought it looked cool, it was like five bucks at Walmart. But regardless, um, having good lighting in your studio is important and it helps spark a good creative mood. Uh, so let's move on. So let's start over here now. This is my first electric guitar, my Epiphone G400 SG. It's about 10 years old at this point. I love it to bits. Uh, it is an amazing guitar. It wasn't super expensive. Um, doesn't look like much, but I still really like it. Um, so there's that. Hiding behind it currently is this little guy down here. This is a 10-year-old Roland Microcube combo amp. It's decently loud, but yeah, it's like a little 2-watt amplifier. It's got a bunch of inbuilt effects. Um, great little practice amp, super portable. Doesn't sound the best in the world, but if you need something cheap, I think they make a newer one of these. Definitely worth a look. Anyway, so next to it is this guy. This is my new shiny favorite guitar. A little birthday present for myself. This is a Chapman Guitars ML1 Modern Baritone, which is like a standard guitar. It's sort of, actually, let me back that up. It's not like a standard guitar. It is halfway between a standard guitar and a bass guitar. So this one sort of goes like this. And this one goes. Much, much lower, down full five semitones. It's pretty sweet. Um, this one's fairly standard as far as guitars go, but this one has this little secret. It's got a coil switch, or a coil split, or a coil tap, or whatever you call those things. Basically, you pull this, and these dual coil pickups become single coil. It basically gives you two two more tonal options, which is really nice. That's cool. Anyway, moving on. So this here is a Korg uh, Pitch Black Mini Tuner Pedal. Always important to stay in tune. Next to it is my Electro Harmonics The Silencer Noise Gate. Very useful for when you're playing metal and you want to make sure you're not going grrrr in the background when you're between notes. This here is my very first effects pedal, the Digitech Death Metal. It is not bad, I got it for like 25 bucks, but all things considered, it's not terrible for how much I paid for it. This is the shiny new, this I believe my, is my newest pedal, the uh, Earthquaker Devices Acapulco Gold. It is basically a Sun Model T power amplifier in a box. This thing, is super huge sounding, gives you like massive sustain, is just an incredible fuzz. If you turn it down to lower levels, it's actually just a very nice distortion. It's a great, great overall pedal and it is extremely simple. It's just a big knob. And next to it is the Earthquaker Devices Rainbow Machine. This thing is a box of wonderment and it's basically an acid trip. So you click this button, and it just, it sounds like a really lush, awesome chorus, and then you click this button, and it sounds like you're flying away in a rocket ship. It's pretty amazing. I'll have to do a demo of it sometime. It's also very loud to click. And that is plugging into, via this magical red cable, we do, da 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 da, 
my new Boss Katana 50 watt combo amplifier. Note the size difference between this one and the small one. This is a big honking device. Like I said, it can go up to 50 watts, but it can also go down to half a watt if you don't want to, you know, blow your eardrums out. It's got a bunch of nice inbuilt effects, uh, three band equalizer, various different amp settings, and you can actually plug it directly into your computer to get access to even more effects. It's pretty sweet. This is a pick. I am a big fan of these gigantic, like three millimeter thick picks. Like you cannot bend this thing at all unless you're like the Hulk. It's great because they won't, they're less likely to wear out and they are extremely, extremely durable. I believe this is the Dunlop Big Stubby. Next to that is another power, is another uh, Korg tuner. This was my first tuner. Um, it's great if you just want something to travel with and don't need an extra, don't have an extra power outlet that you need to deal with. Okay, and now moving on up the path, we have a printer. Yay, old technology. But this, this is my primary microphone. This is a Behringer B1. It is a condenser mic. It has this little switch on there that show that allows you to. Um, it, it gives you the option. Let me just get super up in that grill. There we go. So yeah, it gives you the option for a high pass filter or a 10 dB pad switch. I currently have it set to high pass filter. It just makes it a little bit easier because I mainly use it for vocals. Between that and me is this pop filter. This thing was like seven bucks. It works like a charm though. I've used it for many years. Um, definitely worth it. Uh, big old mic stand, also a good time. Check the stuff, gonna get some of the stuff, forgot a thing in my box. Gonna get out other things. One moment please, pulling out stuff. Da 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 da. Apologies. Oh God, oh God. The struggle is real, I apologize. I also, for my other mic, I also have this. This is a Shure SM57. I don't use it super often, as you can tell. I keep kept it in a drawer somewhere. It's a good dynamic mic. Um, it's very versatile. It it's Because it's a dynamic, it doesn't require phantom power, so you can basically just plug it in and go with pretty much everything. It's nice. So, moving down. Woo, big shiny thing. This is a Launchpad Pro. I love this thing. It is it is a clip triggering device. It can manage effects. Uh, it can play all this stuff live on your DAW, and it's currently set to MIDI controller mode. Okay, for some reason this doesn't want to work. Apologies, um, but yeah, it's a uh, MIDI controller. Whatever. Yeah, it seems to be frozen. It does that when you turn it back on. Whee! That's pretty. Anyway, yeah. At any rate, it's really cool. It can also be a MIDI controller. I love it to bits, and it is super portable. You can fit it in a backpack, and it's awesome. Okay, moving on to the desk. There's lots of stuff on this desk, so we'll break it down. First and foremost, Fidget Cube! I'm a dork. Yes, I know. Don't worry about that. Anyway, so in the back, we have our dear friends, the studio monitors. These are PreSonus Eris E5 studio monitors. They are currently sitting on a pair of Oralex Mopads and a pair of monitor stands to the floor. That's a horse. So yeah, these, these are great. I've had a good some good experience with them. They were relatively cheap as far as studio monitors go, but they're better than the computer speakers that I have next to them. These are just for computer stuff. Now we have more horses, because you can never have too much inspiration. That's a CD. That's a shock mount, similar to this one over here. Wee, I'm just flying around. And next to that is my first generation Focusrite Scarlet 2i4 interface. Um, it's pretty great. I, plug, I currently have the mic plugged into it. It can also plug in a guitar. Um, it has headphone out, independent of speaker, volume, has various other settings on here like, now it's quiet, 
Now it's normal. Here's a volume control. It's kind of dark, so you can't really see what it is. But at any rate, it's it's a pretty awesome audio interface, especially for how cheap it is. It was, I think, like 200 bucks. Um, they can go cheaper, but this had a fair few other options on there, so that was fun. Then we have a capo. Great choice if you have a baritone guitar or just like being able to play higher notes. Always fun. And next to that is my trusty Sony MDR 7506 studio monitor headphones. I already did a video on these, so I won't talk about them anymore. And this is my Nectar Impact LX61 MIDI controller. Like I said, 61, so 61 keys. It's got a bunch of different things on it, a bunch of different encoders like sliders and knobs that make the numbers go wee, and that's always fun. It's got drum pads, it's got a pitch controller and a uh, whatever they call this uh, mod wheel, right? I don't use it very often as you can tell. Uh, I've been meaning to use it more though, so that's something I am working on. But yeah, this thing is great, it was 200 bucks. Fairly, fairly standard, fairly full featured for how cheap it is. Uh, I think it's just standard, like synth keys. But yeah, it works great. I love it. Um, and this is FL Studio, my dog of choice. I've talked about it at length in the past. I love it to bits. This in particular is Serum. It is a pretty great, I've been pushing buttons on it before. See, it talks. It is a pretty great um, wavetable synth. It's got a whole bunch of different sounds on it. I'm a big fan. And the rig that this thing is currently running on is this little box down here. This is a five-year-old Alienware X51. Yeah, I know it's kind of old and kind of like, hey, don't, why didn't you make your own? Because I was not knowledgeable about computers at the time. Didn't really trust myself to get a, to build my own. Whatever, it's not a big deal. It serves me well. I've had to, this is the computer that, this is actually the computer that broke when, uh, like last summer. That was, that was not fun. But um, I have since replaced the hard drive. It has a nice, solid state hard drive in there, as well as a nice big two terabyte HDD on top in the back there. Good times, good times. So yeah, that's pretty much it, Razer Mouse. And in the back we have our friend, the Furman Power Conditioner. This is basically a power strip on steroids and it makes sure that my box doesn't fry. So always good. Um, and this is a chair. So yeah, that's my home studio in a nutshell. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please let me know. If you like what you saw and want to hear more of the sounds that come from these various devices, please subscribe. And as usual, have fun and keep making sounds.